Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel's 69th installment of our Milestones Anthology on the History of Technology and Space Exploration, and our sixth segment of the SpaceX Starship Interplanetary Spacecraft Program, and more specifically, the serial number 10 suborbital flight of the new spacecraft's full main stage configuration. On March 3rd, 2021, after a launch abort earlier in the day, the Starship serial number 10 spacecraft was launched about 67 miles in altitude or about the same or a little less than serial number eight and serial number nine prototypes reached on December 9th, 2020 and February 2nd, 2021. The craft is the third to sport flaps in a nose cone. So number 10 follows its predecessors. So number nine, so number eight, so number six, so number five, and the Starhopper, which have successfully completed hops at various heights along with controlled landings. SpaceX had previously conducted two static fire tests on serial number 10 replacing one of the Raptor engines whose test data did not appear to be nominal. The launch was conducted a few days after SpaceX had obtained a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration subsequent to the latest investigation, this time for the crash of serial number 9. The FAA Space Division had insisted on investigating any crash of a Starship spacecraft and has firmly exercised its prerogative regarding both serial number 8 and serial number 9. Neither the FAA or SpaceX has publicly revealed the investigation's findings or recommendations. Spacecraft are considered controlled munitions by the U.S. government, and any technical discussion is likely kept under wraps for that reason. The serial number 9 flight differed in that the FAA had publicly chastised SpaceX for violating the terms of its license during the serial number 8 launch and landing. Neither the FAA or SpaceX would comment as to what aspect of the license was violated. Speculation has centered on the launch height, which is reportedly 8 miles or more. The serial number 9 flight did not come with a similar controversy. Like with serial number 8 and serial number 9, serial number 10 used three Raptor engines to launch the 260,000 pound rocket. All three engines fired at liftoff, with each shutting down in succession to halt its ascent. However, unlike for serial number 8 and serial number 9, all three of the engines were then reignited to reorient the craft in the vertical with the tail down, and then for a controlled descent and landing. The Raptor engines are designed specifically for the Starship. It is anticipated that the production Starships will use six Raptor engines, and its Super Heavy booster will use 30 engines. In contrast, the Falcon 9 uses nine Merlin engines, and the Falcon Heavy uses 27 Merlin engines. The Starship prototypes at this stage of development feature a flight termination system, would be engaged in the event the spacecraft veers away from the target landing area, presenting a possible danger to civilian areas. The FTS was not required for either serial number 8 or serial number 9, both of which crashed right on the landing pads. The serial number 10 launch is the next action in a series of tests on the Starship design, with several previous static prototypes during ground tests, and two full-size craft during flight being destroyed in a learning process of trial and error. Let's watch the serial number 10 launch and landing in real time. QS 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. We have liftoff. All teams triage alerts, please. FC2, please prepare for section 35, OSC, FC1, LVN. T plus 30 seconds, Starship 10 has lift off. It's headed to 10 kilometers on its test flight from Boca Chica in Cameron County, Texas.
Coming up on T-plus two minutes, we're getting ready to transition from three engines to two engines firing on Starship. We'll be shutting one engine off. That's intentional. T plus three minutes and counting. Starship coming up on eight kilometers altitude. We're getting ready to shut down the second engine. This is intentional. I'm clear. Oh, very nice, very nice. Okay, now to switch over to the header tank for the one engine. Okay, I'm going to come back up when we hit 10 kilometers, right about in three seconds. Coming up on T plus four minutes, we're at 10 kilometers. We've gone into the hover. We're still being powered by the single Raptor engine. T plus four minutes and 40 seconds. Starship has transitioned. It's flipped to the horizontal mode, beginning the descent back to the landing zone. Coming up on five minutes, 45 seconds. We're down below two kilometers. We're preparing to light three Raptor engines to begin the flip sequence. It'll culminate with landing on the landing pad in Boca Chica. Third time's a charm, as the saying goes. We've had a successful soft touchdown on the landing pad. That's capping a beautiful test flight of Starship 10. As a reminder, the key point of today's test flight was to gather the data on controlling the vehicle while re-entering, and we were successful in doing so. We had a nominal ascent. We had the maneuver to place Starship horizontal when we reached 10 kilometers right on time. 
And then during the subsonic entry, it appears we had good control of the vehicle using the front and aft flaps. And as we approached the landing pad, we successfully lit the three Raptor engines to perform that flip maneuver. And then we shut down two of them and landed on the single engine as planned, a beautiful soft landing of Starship on the landing pad at Boca Chica. Also, a congratulations to the Starship team in Texas. They've steadily increased the test launch cadence over the course of the program and have delivered some of the most exciting test flights many of us have seen in a long time. The Texas team has several more suborbital test vehicles in build with number 11 ready to roll out to the pad in the very near future. It's an inspiring time for the future of human spaceflight. Thanks for joining us today and we hope you'll join us for the next test flight of Starship 11. At 4 minutes and 30 seconds from launch, so number 10 throttled down and then shut off the last remaining lit engine, reorienting the craft for its return glide. At T plus 6 minutes, all three engines were then lit in preparation for landing. Unlike its predecessors, the Starship stuck its landing on the ground pad with only a short rebound, settling firmly upright. Elon Musk was quick to express his pleasure on Twitter for the first fully configured Starship successful launch and landing, saying, quote, Starship serial number 10 landed in one piece. Following the serial number 8 launch and crash, the SpaceX CEO had congratulated the engineering team on a successful test, but he was silent subsequent on the serial number 9 crash for a few days until releasing a humorous meme about the failure on Twitter. SpaceX is iterating towards a final version of Starship that Musk has said will be capable of carrying up to 100 people to the moon, Mars, and other distant destinations. The 165-foot tall Starship will launch from Earth atop a first-stage booster known as a Super Heavy, which will be powered by two and a half dozen Raptors of its own. The Starship vehicle will be powerful enough to blast itself off the moon and Mars, whose gravitational poles are much weaker than that of our planet, Musk has said. Both Starship and the forthcoming Super Heavy are designed to be fully and rapidly reusable, a technological breakthrough that SpaceX believes will make ambitious exploration feats, such as Mars colonization, economically feasible. Starship will fly a wide variety of missions to many different destinations, if all goes according to plan. SpaceX plans to phase out all of its other space flight hardware over time, handing all duties over to Starship and its Super Heavy booster. Musk previously said the lifetime of each Starship will be around 20 to 30 years, like an aircraft. Around three Starship flights will launch from Earth per day, or around 1,000 flights a year, and each will have a capacity of more than 90,000 pounds, according to the billionaire. By continuously ferrying the people the 180 million miles to Mars, Musk is predicting 1,000 human inhabitants by 2030, and maybe around 1 million by 2050. SpaceX is currently pursuing a launch license for full-scale, orbital-class Starship Super Heavy vehicles. Musk hopes the spacecraft will be lifted to low Earth orbit by 2021 and have people inside of it by the end of 2022. This would hopefully be followed by a cargo mission to Mars in that same year, return NASA astronauts to the lunar surface in 2024, and even begin sending people to Mars the same year. SpaceX has already booked one Starship customer, Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maezawa, who will fly around the moon on the vehicle with several other hand-picked passengers. The target date for that mission is 2023, with the crew roster being settled by the end of 2021. Starship is also in the running to land NASA astronauts on the moon as part of the space agency's Artemis program. The Trump administration aimed to put two astronauts down near the lunar south pole in 2024 and establish a sustainable human presence on around the moon by the end of the decade. The Biden administration has indicated that timetable is too aggressive, and NASA put on hold in February of 2021 the contract award for a new lunar lander. In the meantime, work continues unabated on the Starship development program. Serial number 11 is already nearing completion, as is serial number 15. It is not clear what differentiates serial numbers 11 and 15 from serial number 10. Serial numbers 12 to 14 were scrapped after the serial number 9 launch, indicating that some significant engineering aspect was discovered during the serial number 8 and serial number 9 tests, something that could not be implemented in holes too far into their construction. Two holes for the Super Heavy booster, BN1 and BN2, are also currently under construction at SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site, with BN1 nearing full assembly. SpaceX has not yet announced when a Super Heavy booster will undergo static fire tests, which is undoubtedly the first step still needed to be undertaken for the new rocket. 
there is also movement with regard to the development of the SpaceX Boca Chica launch area in general, particularly with regard to the construction of the planned spaceport, roughly an analog to Florida's Kennedy Space Center. The Boca Chica site currently only features the company's fabrication and engineering facilities, from which it conducts its flight tests. SpaceX has begun hiring planning staff for the spaceport in nearby Brownsville, Texas. What do you think about SpaceX's Starship Commercial Interplanetary Spacecraft Development Program? Do you think that SpaceX's Starship will reach orbit before the end of 2021? Share with us by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this 69th installment of Belated Tech's Milestone series. If so, click that like button. We hope we have earned your subscription to our channel. If so, and if you have not taken the opportunity to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 200 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos on our micro blogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Bladed Tech Gaming channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. And finally, join us on our Facebook and Minds pages, where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.